Excuse me, little dog. Hi, guys. You know, if it was like three degrees cooler, it would be a spectacularly gorgeous, over the top, beautiful late summer day here in the collapse of everything on the planet here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Uh, where we have somehow stumbled into Friday. It is Friday, September 8th, 2023, and I have a bunch of vacation tourists coming in, <coughs> not by boat, but by gas-sucking car. And uh, being Friday, so guys, I know this is going to break your heart but uh, it's going to break your heart because I just don't have the stomach to do my ecological meltdown roundup rant where I check in with Manga Bay with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls at MangaBay.com. So I can sit here one more time going through just reading the latest installment of uh, Death to a Planet by a million cuts that nobody wants to hear about. And none of you doomers gives a damn about the death to this planet by a million cuts, obviously. Uh, nobody wants to hear Rhett Butler droning on and on uh, about how many ways the planet is collapsing this week. Sounds just like the rant last week just like the rant next week so uh in its place i am thrilled to say i have f finally found it and i think this is the first time in my life i have ever heard anybody join in on this rant which is a you know just not not an I wouldn't use the term expose, just a no-shit Sherlock uh, explanation about the single most indefensible industry on planet Earth. This is an industry, it 100% exists to... Uh, cater to the most irretrievably, irrevocably clueless effing morons on the planet. The entire industry uh, owes its life to the single most unreachable clueless morons uh, walking this planet. And if you are not immediately aware of what industry we're talking about, because there are so many to choose from, it is the cruise industry. The cruise industry, where I have been saying for how many years I have been ranting, it is time to put every single uh, one of these cruise ships on the bottom of the ocean. And every clueless moron uh, on every one of these cruise ships on the bottom of the ocean today. And just give the bottom feeders a little bit to chew on for a while. But anyway, uh, I'm so glad to hear that someone is joining me in this rant. And this is somebody whose name I have never heard of in my entire life, popping up on, take a wild guess, my medium.com digest of doom this morning from a fellow named Mike Grindle. Mike Grindle, I'm not sure. Uh, Mike Grindle is a writer, blogger, and culture critic, culture critic. Anyway, uh, so take it away. That's all bit a warm welcome to Mike Grindle, 
making his uh, premiere appearance at Collapse Chronicles, asking the question, asking the question, and I think we know the answer to the question, is it time we let the cruise industry sink? Yes. Are cruises really going green or just green washing? That's a real tough brain teaser. Uh, you know, the, the, just the pictures of these damn things. Anyway, take it away, Mike. <clears throat> the corona panic was hard on pretty much every industry. Unless you were in the medical business, meaning, you know, and, and, and unless you were a pharmaceutical executive, a tech billionaire, or were close buddies with certain public officials, you were likely feeling the crunch. But for the cruise industry, in particular, the corona panic was a business and marketing disaster as images of ships full of stranded and sick passengers made their way across social media and news stations around the globe, hopping on a cruise for your holiday had never looked so repellent. Some even speculated that result would be a death blow to an industry already long criticized for its impact on local communities and the environment and notorious for spreading infections. Surely, surely, an increasingly environmentally conscious and now health conscious public could never go back to boarding these obscene polluting monstrosities. However, not only have the passengers returned, they have done so in force, and cruising is once again one of the highest growing in tourist industries with the Cruise Lines International Association, CLIA, predicting that the industry will grow to 12% above pre-pandemic levels by 2026, assuming humans are not extinct. That is amazing news for ship captains, investors, and people whose idea of a holiday is staring at the sea but considering that cruising has a long and sordid history of sewage dumping, pollution, and oil waste, as well as the tendency towards falsifying records and cover-ups, the return of cruising seems like devastating news for the environment. The industry says it is cleaning up its act with all sorts of nice-sounding pledges and new technologies. But can it really be trusted? Are guilt-free cruises here? Or is it just more marketing talk? And should you still avoid these things like the plague. Uh, I honestly don't know if this, this thing right here is a photograph, an artist rendering, or a cartoon. But uh, Mike is sharing, I guess, something he found uh, on TikTok, I believe. Uh... The Icon of the Seas set sail in January 2024 with 5,610 passengers, 2,350 crew members, five times larger and heavier than the Titanic, 
19 floors with more than 40 bars, restaurants, and bowling alleys. What a monstrosity. Good Lord, I honestly don't, I, I can't, that's got to be an artist rendering or a uh, harmonious Bosch uh, painting. Anyway, back to Mike. <clears throat> Many major issues surrounding cruise ships simply come down to a matter of size. Cruise ships are big, like really, really big. In fact, they are now some of the largest ships in the world and they're only getting more massive. Take the monstrous icon of the seas. And, you know, that we just went, looked at that picture of. Now imagine them all turning up in your local coastal town. Not only do these liners hold the population comparable to small cities, but they, have, they also have all the amenities of one. Bowling alleys, basketball courts, ice skating rinks, water parks, cinemas, supermarkets, and of course luxury dining facilities are all features you can now commonly expect to find on a cruise ship. And building these cruises and mega cruise is building these cruises and mega cruises, really a good use of resources during a climate and biodiversity crisis? You can be the judge of that, but as Earth Overshoot Day keeps coming around earlier in the year, it's hard to argue the case for them. With all of that in mind, it does not take a PhD in environmental science to figure out that these behemoths might, might also not be all that green once they set sail. However, research suggests that many people do not realize and do not care to realize how polluting cruise ships are, and to be clear, the science that the clueless morons going on these cruises <clears throat> do not ever want to read, you know, that science does not paint a pretty picture. <clears throat> Take a study conducted by Transport and Environment, which found that in 2022, cruise ships in Europe alone pumped out more harmful gases than 1 billion, with a B, cars, emitting around 509 tons of sulfur oxides. More worryingly, that figure is up from pre-pandemic levels, even though passenger levels had not yet returned when the researchers conducted the study. You might want to think twice about stepping on to one of these things if you have any kind of respiratory problems, or if you don't have any respiratory problems and would like it to stay that way. That's because another report authored by Dr. Ryan Kennedy, shows that the air quality on cruises is equivalent to a badly polluted city. And, according to another study headed by Dr. Joseph LeRae and published by the Marine Pollution Bulletin, the problems do not end there. LeRae and company found that not only is, is cruising polluting the air, water, soil, habitat, and wildlife, but is a potential source of both physical and mental health risks to passengers, staff, and land-based residents. Again, part of that is the whole air pollution problem 
but the study also notes difficult working conditions, noise pollution, and the spread of infection. It all sounds damning, but cruise industry leaders are keen to stress that these very recent issues are all icky, icky problems from the past and suggest that thanks to new tech and big pledges, cruises are going green. Going green? Believe it when you see it. In response to recent reports on the cruise industry's environmental impact, Andy Harmer, don't you love this guy's name, the managing director of CLIA UK and Ireland, this planet eater's name is Andy Harmer, uh, told the Independent that the cruise industry, according to Mr. Harmer, is, quote, strongly committed to continually improving its sustainability efforts. You know, that kind of reminds me, what is the the uh, sum of zero plus zero. If you have zero sustainability efforts and you double them, you still have zero sustainability. Indeed, the industry is pumping money into green technologies such as sustainable fuels and making their ships more energy efficient. The industry has also pledged to make zero emission vessels and fuels widespread by 2030 and to achieve a goal of net zero carbon cruising by 2050. There is one way to achieve a goal of net zero carbon cruising by 2050, and that is to put every one of these planet-eating monstrosities on the bottom of the ocean with every one of these clueless morons at the bar while you do it. <clears throat> it all sounds great, but critics are skeptical Citing the industry's less-than-stellar record, take the case of Carnival Cruise Lines, the largest cruise line in the world based on number of passengers. Over the last decade alone, this one cruise line has been caught illegally dumping oil into the ocean from its Princess cruise ships and lying about the scheme according to court filings. Illegally dumping thousands of gallons of gray water into Glacier Bay National Park in Alaska. Falsifying maintenance records that fell under environmental compliance plans. Dumping waste oil off the coast of Britain releasing over 500,000 gallons of sewage and 11,000 gallons of food waste globally, and it goes without saying, dumping plastic waste in this one case in the waters around the Bahamas. Needless to say, these actions don't exactly inspire trust or confidence. Critics have also pointed out that many so-called green technologies implemented on cruisers are not as green as they first appear. One particular point of contention concerns the recent use of scrubbers. Scrubbers. These cleaning systems are installed onto smokestacks to remove chemicals from the fumes of dirty fuel. Scrubbers were, in fact, the shipping sector's previous attempt at going green. 
they do the job of reducing air pollution to levels that meet compliance measures, but they come with a clear trade-off. Instead of contaminating the air, they contaminate the water. According to an International Council on Clean Transportation report on global discharge waste, the result means that some 10 gigatons, otherwise known as 10 billion tons, 10 billion tons of scrubber wastewater are discharged into the sea every year. Another report from the Swedish Environmental Research Institute found scrubber wash water was causing severe toxic effects on the oceanic food chain. This is Andrew Dumbriel, advisor for the Clean Arctic Alliance. Quote, the writing has been on the wall for many years with scrubbers and their environmental implications. The issue is that more ships are going to be installing more scrubbers, and so the problems are predicted to get worse. Close quote. Then there is LNG, you know, short for liquid nat natural gas, a quote, transition fuel that has also come under fire from green groups. Proponents argue that uptake of LNG could drastically cut CO2 emissions, but the ICCT suggests that its use could actually make the shipping industry's climate impact worse thanks to the leaking of methane. Uh, quote, Given this, we conclude that using LNG does not deliver the emissions reductions required by whoever the IMO's initial greenhouse gas strategy and that using it could actually worsen shipping's climate impacts. Further, continuing to invest in LNG infrastructure on ships and onshore might make it harder to transition to low carbon and zero carbon fuels in the future, close quote. Meanwhile, Friends of the Earth who issue an annual report card analyzing the sustainability of cruise ships argues such measures account for little more than greenwashing, quoting the Friends of the Earth annual report card analyzing the sustainability of cruise ships. Quote, Instead of making true commitments and steps in the right direction, they use tricky marketing tactics to make you think you are taking a green vacation when in reality you are being complicit with their pollution and harm to the planet, including coastal communities, close quote. So, can the cruise industry go green? And, and this is where I, I don't know what the hell Hopium Mike got into, maybe in time, but right here and now, all the evidence suggests that if you care about the environment, you might want to skip that cruise next summer. Mm. In case you haven't noticed, the planet is getting pretty hostile to our existence lately. 
extreme weather, including record-breaking heat waves and floods, is now the norm, and the science remains clear that nothing less than a drastic, radical, and rapid change is needed if we don't want things to get much worse. We can't wait for greener technologies that are still decades off, nor can we sit in her, nor can we sit in her, sit in her, her sit in her, uh, hope. Their world, their word, keep, that companies keep their word and reach their climate targets down the road. To put it frankly, if something is not environmentally friendly right now, we should be asking ourselves if it's truly viable. Commitment to doing better tomorrow is worthless for the major problems we face today. So, until the cruise industry is actually green, you might want to keep the earth beneath your feet come your next holiday. There you go. Uh, And it's nice to see that uh, some people with brains are leaving comments. Here is the comment from, uh, I guess this guy has a brain. Uh, Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles. I have been saying for years that the cruise industry is hands down the single most indefensible industry on the planet. Every aspect of it is dedicated to clueless morons who have never once considered and will never consider the environmental effects of their abominable consumer and lifestyle choices. Anybody Clueless enough to ever step onto one of these monsters needs to be sent to the bottom of the ocean along with the ship, where maybe a few bottom feeders can get a good meal and a few of our bottom-dwelling fellow earthlings can enjoy making a new home of the place after all the oil and toxic chemicals have been flushed out. There you go. And uh, so I do have to sheepishly admit I, uh, I did go on one cruise in my life when my buddy's uh, clueless moron girlfriend, well, I guess she wasn't the clueless moron. I guess my clueless moron buddy's girlfriend uh, decided not to join him on the cruise, and he had this $700 ticket lying around. So uh, he gave it to me, and we took a five-day, four-night cruise from Galveston, Texas to Cancun, Mexico, and we were on the way back and realizing we never saw Cancun, Mexico on our cruise to Cancun, Mexico, which was probably a good thing. Uh, but anyway, I have to wrap up uh, today's chronicle of the collapse because I have some hopefully not quite so clueless uh, vacation tourist showing up in their gas-sucking cars to come spend this beautiful weekend 
and a little tiny house at Bugs in a Jar Farm. I highly suggest you get out there and uh, take a vacation in a tiny house in the woods while you still can. And we all know why. Bye, guys.